Hello, my name is Yen Long and I'm with the Cuyahoga County Board of Health. Um, I've been here for nearly seven years and I started off in the environmental health service area as a registered sanitarian. Um, I have worked in many districts um, across the county, um, all over the place, probably serving about at least 10 or so municipalities um, as a sanitarian. I started off doing inspections of um, schools, pools, lead, homes, following up on nuisance, complaints of illness, um, all kinds of programs in environmental health. And then um, recently, I finished my master's in public health from Case Western Reserve, and I've moved into um, an administrative role here at the County Board of Health. Um, you may have heard that our department is the largest in the state, serving about 886,000 uh, individuals, and that is across 57 municipalities. And so our folks stay quite busy um, across the agency. I'll give you a little bit of a summary um, of health departments and in public health in general, and I want you to kind of understand how it is that our office fits into the public health system. Um, most public health offices actually began as a result of the 1918 pandemic flu, and this is probably something you've already covered in class, but public health takes a prevention side to health care. So unlike a lot of the providers, the physicians, and the nurses that are on the treatment side, we take a look at health from a population standpoint, and we look at strategies, policies, and community partners, um, and ask them as a group, along with our departments and capacities, how can we best prevent people from becoming ill? And there are a number of reasons why people become ill, so a lot of these approaches require um, diverse experience and strategies to make them work. And so, a little bit of information about public health. Um, local health departments are actually just one component of that. Um, on the state level, there are departments of health as well, and this varies um, across the country, actually. Some states have just state departments and no locals, others have locals, and the state um, supports their efforts. On the federal level, we have the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, known as the CDC. I'm sure lots of you guys are familiar with that. And then we also have the uh, Department of Health and Human Services um, that provides a lot of direction for states and locals as well. So if you kind of figure, um, imagine a map, there are all three sometimes of these functions of public health departments working um, at any given time. So public health jobs are in fact everywhere. And a lot of the services that we actually provide are invisible to the public because they are preventive health services. And so the other thing that I want to mention about public health is right now there's an enormous amount of opportunity to become involved and to become engaged. Um, as a career field, um, they're actually retiring 25% um, of the public health uh, workforce over the next three years. So there will be a tremendous need for new folks to be trained in public health and for new folks to take on those roles. Currently, leadership in public health departments on all different levels are planning for succession and planning for training new folks to be able to take on the roles that they're currently uh, working in now. So the amount of opportunity in public health is enormous, and this is a great time. So if you just look at the recent news media alone, um, there'll be a lot of information that you can find about public health and outbreaks and illness. And traditional public health, while focused in infectious disease, has taken on more roles. Um, Hurricane Katrina is an example. The um, peanut butter recalls, recalls associated with uh, E. coli and beef. There has been SARS. There's an, any number of new and emerging um, re-emerging illnesses. Bed bugs is actually another example of something that many health departments are dealing with. Um, outbreaks of that and associated with different hotels and, and creeping up in homes as well. So all of these things are programs in which public health officials do work in on a daily basis. Here at the Cuyahoga County Board of Health, we have a number of service areas. Environmental health that deals with a lot of the regulated programs, schools, pools, lead, mold, moisture, built environments, um, beaches, marinas, um, septic systems, waterways, a lot of those activities that deal with the built environments are in environmental health. Then we have community health, which has a number of prevention programs, including tobacco, breast and cervical cancer screening, dental options, just to name a few. Um, and in addition to that, the lead program is very big in community health. 
The other section of our service area is epidemiology, surveillance and informatics. And so they do all of the disease tracking and um, contact tracebacks for illness investigations that we conduct here, which is a very important function. They also keep a lot of statistical information and reporting on maternal and child health indicators as well, which is also very important um, in any community. Administrative services kind of serves as a support role, and that is where I'm housed in, but a lot of what we do is planning. So my uh, key role is in monitoring the agency's performance goals and helping the agency to plan where it is that we are going to be. And so I would direct you at this time to the first slide that I have that's part of the presentation. So in this first slide, you'll notice that the public health agency is really in the center of this diagram. And it doesn't have to be the biggest bubble, but it is definitely a very important component of it because of all the services that we do provide the community members. But the system itself is actually comprised of everyone together. So if we take a look at this diagram, you'll see civic groups that are involved. There are nursing homes, community centers, um, home health care, mental health, fire, police, um, elected officials are a part of the public health community. So is transit in order for folks to be able to access care. Uh, the corrections institutions, there are a number of employers, there are um, physicians, hospitals, and emergency medical service providers. All of these um, are part of the public health system and it is important to consider them and keep them a part of the planning process um, when you look at where the community wants to go and the areas in which they want to improve. And so um, a lot of times these public health partners, however, don't know that they are a part of the public health system. They kind of have tunnel vision sometimes and it's important for them to understand how they fit into the system and how they can work with a local department um, to move initiatives forward. And so um, on the second slide, there are qualities of a well-functioning public health system. And different areas may be along the path different ways in different places as far as getting this to this picture, but this is kind of the ideal of what we strive for. If these conditions are met, then you know that you're headed in the right direction, that you're going to probably meet the community's needs because they've been a part of the planning process all along. And so some of those qualities include a strong partnership where the partners do recognize that they are part of the system, effective channels of communication. So many times you hear that the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. We're offering this program. Oh, I didn't know that this agency also offered this program. How can we get together to, to better serve the communities or just do these kind of overlap? System-wide health objectives. So because it is, public health is population-based, we wanna make sure that we are getting at um, health from a system standpoint. And policies oftentimes are the best ways to improve health. For example, seat belt laws, um, fluoridation of water, and then also more recently the smoke-free workplace law that's been enforced in Ohio. And so another characteristic includes sharing of resources. And this is kind of a tough one to get at because everyone, especially in more difficult economic times, tends to hold on more tightly to what it is they have. But resources is not just dollars, it's talents as well. And so in, in a situation, in an environment where all of that is shared, more folks stand to benefit from that. Leadership um, from public health agencies is important um, because the most faceted approach and services that we have um, that are able to serve the community at any given time. And so the last thing is effective communication and feedback loops amongst system partners. And that's just to ensure that folks know what is going on at, at any given time and for quality improvement, they know where to go with suggestions, recommendations, so errors that are made don't have to continue to be made. You probably have been asked, um, what exactly is public health? And the answer is, is very diverse, and the answer is very complex. And if you ask three different people on the street that work in public health, they could be any number of those system partners that we had talked about previously. But if you ask three different people on the street what public health is, you'll probably get three completely different answers. And somehow those answers will be probably mostly right. And so public health has kind of an identity crisis going on because 
folks don't know exactly what it is. Well, um, about a decade ago, the Institutes of Medicine started an effort to define exactly what public health is, and that's kind of listed here on the third, or I'm sorry, on the third slide. So these are known as the essential public health services, um, of which there are 10, but administration has been recently added onto this too. And so from a local health department perspective, I'm gonna to speak to what each of these means to the local health department. And so the first one is monitoring health status. And again, these are all the essential services that departments are, and systems together could provide to a region. The first one, monitoring health status to identify and solve community health problems. So that would be like all of the surveillance activities, disease monitoring that goes on in the community. Um, how do we know if the number of, of uh, E. coli cases are higher than average if there's an outbreak that's going on. We kind of keep tabs of what um, illnesses are in the communities and what those expected rates are. And if those rates are higher than what's expected, that might warrant further investigation. The second one is to diagnose and investigate. So in the instance where we get calls or complaints in, in order to make sure that that hazard doesn't reach more individuals, we go in and we conduct an investigation and we uh, try to mitigate the causes of what is um, causing illness in the community. Informing and educating, um, empowering people about health issues. And that's something that you usually think of the media as being involved with, but health departments are doing education and training all the time. Not just the folks that um, are in the communities or in the schools, but we also do a lot of provider education and training as well, keeping them up on what the standards of CDC are and what the protocols are for, for certain illness conditions. The fourth essential service is mobilizing community partnerships and um, actions to identify and solve health problems. So in an instance where a department doesn't have all of the resources, perhaps you need to work with um, law enforcement for example, um, during certain illness cases and outbreak cases where you may suspect that um, there's malicious intent. Well, that's an instance where you might work with federal agents or local law enforcement to kind of conduct an investigation. So that's just one example. There, be, there may be a number of different partners that you'll work with at any given time. So developing policies and plans um, that support community and individual and individual community health efforts. That is really focused around um, the planning that goes on in the community to make sure that everyone is benefiting from um, the, the initiatives that move forward, that everybody knows that they're a stakeholder in some of those activities. The sixth one is to enforce the laws and the regulations that protect health and ensure safety. And while many people think that the, the health department is all about enforcement, it is one of the functions of the department but it's usually not the first action that we take. Um, it's important though to say that we have uh, the ability to go out and enforce the regulations that are there, especially when uh, illness is a result of some of the conditions that are out there that we are finding. So the seventh essential public health service is really linking people to needed personal health services and ensuring the provision of health care when otherwise unavailable. Um, in Northeast Ohio, we usually don't think of uh, health care being unavailable because we have so many systems of hospitals here, both in Akron area, the Kent area, and in the Cleveland area as well. But if you think about more rural areas, perhaps uh, tribal health areas, um, uh, places where geography doesn't allow for easy access or a lot of uh, folks to be at, direct health care services can be a challenge. And so when those hospitals, those physicians are not there, uh, public health of officials, nurses um, can serve in that capacity. The eighth essential service is to assure a competent public and personal health care workforce. And this goes back again a little bit to the provider education and the information that we put out there, um, making sure that folks are current on when vaccines are needed, uh, when prophylaxis after exposure to an illness is needed and what are the um, what are the protocols associated with that. We're constantly doing education for our partners on that topic. The ninth um, is evaluating the effectiveness, the accessibility, and the quality of those services. Um, that's kind of self-explanatory, so I won't go into that too much more. And the tenth is researching for new insights, innovative solutions to health problems. 
And that's really in partnership with, uh, with academia. So it's a lot of what we're doing um, within the schools to launch new projects that we see need to be researched. So in closing, I'd really just like to say that there are a lot of opportunities in public health right now that the career field within public health is very diverse. Um, you can work in planning, research, education, training, investigations, um, statistical information, looking at data from health promotion, disease prevention. There's any number of things that can be done within the field of public health. Um, it's exciting. It's rewarding and, and it's diverse. So I really encourage anybody that has questions um, about it to certainly give me a call. You have my contact information and I look forward to hearing from you.